people will not on or there will not be any change but then a gentle word um, is uh, it can even break a bone strong enough um, then we also see that um, it's it's it, it is like cold water to a weary soul uh, refreshes the person uh, when the right words are good news right it refers to good news but the right words are spoken and and also that if one does not rule over his own spirit or her own spirit, then it's we make ourselves very, very vulnerable. It's like a city that is broken down, that is without walls. So there's no protection. There is uh, we are open to all kinds of attack, and uh, and so is the person who does not have a self-governing ability. Right. So uh, of course, if a person does not have a self-governing ability, then the words they speak also will be, you know, without self-control. Right, harsh words, um, words that are spoken, which are without self-control, maybe spoken in uh, spoken in anger and so on. So uh, it's like we place ourselves in a vulnerable position. Right, it's like a city that is broken down, that does not have security, that does not have walls. So of course we don't want that. So scripture is warning us today. We are reminded today uh, of this. Right. So let's um, let's pray. And uh, let's ask the Lord to, um, you know, give us this ability to use these kind of words. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you this morning that uh, for this reminder about words, appropriate words, gentle words. Um, we thank you for the reminder that, um, yeah, God, that for words that refresh a person's soul and a person's spirit. Father, we thank you that for the reminder that when we do not have self-governing ability, we place ourselves in a very vulnerable position, open for attack. Um, God, we, Lord, we do not want that. So, God, we thank you for this um, reminder and warning. Father God, we pray that um, may our hearts be filled with your words, Lord. May we be filled with your spirit, Lord. And so the overflow of our heart, Lord, I pray that will be words that come from your heart, Master. When we respond to situations, when we respond to uh, Lord, uh, circumstances, when we respond to conflicts, when we respond to taunts, and uh, when we respond to all kinds of things, Lord, temptations, and Lord, um, I just pray that it will be a spirit-led, a spirit overflow, a word overflow response, Father God. And um, I just pray that for each one of us, even our reactions, God, even our reflex reactions will be a, a righteous reflex reaction, Father God. That it be righteous, even the triggers, God, uh, it will be righteous, Father God. Um, Master, we pray that you would, that we would, so expose ourselves to your word that we would that you would so fill us with your spirit with your presence father god that uh, be so molded and changed and transformed god that our response our reflex will be righteous we thank you lord we commit ourselves into your mighty hands in jesus name we pray amen amen okay awesome let's uh yeah let's get right in any questions based on what we discussed last class um we we spoke about um conflicts right we spoke about conflicts and then we were looking at uh yeah um just a minute um yeah so we were looking at uh conflicts and the reason why there are conflicts um so any um any questions so why do you why do you think there are conflicts you know if we are new creations if we are born again if we follow the lord jesus if we are believers you know there should be no conflicts right is that a good as is that a, a safe assumption or not to assume that hey two believers are getting married two, two people who love the lord jesus um what do you think what is your response? Anyone?
Yes. So, conflicts, can, yes, conflicts can yeah. arise because of we are human. Sometimes we become emotional. So conflicts can arise even between believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they become emotional. Um, so which is basically the area of our soul, right? Our thought, our mind, will, emotions. Um, and the Lord Jesus has uh, on the cross, yes. Uh, well, we are born again because of, uh, you know, that's perfect sacrifice. And we are born again by the incorruptible word. Um, but our soul realm it remains unchanged and it is our responsibility to renew our mind. It is our responsibility to be um, conformed to the likeness of our Lord and Savior, to be Christ-like, right? So um, in order to live a consecrated life, in order to, uh, you know, respond in a sanctified manner, you know, so that's our responsibility, right? So emotionally, we get stirred up, we react, we lash out maybe, and uh, there are conflicts. Okay, so, so Zelitoli says we are different from each, from each other. You know, that's a that's a very basic, a wide category in the sense, um, yes, as men and as women. Okay, so marriage is between a man and a woman. You know, uh, we are very clear about that, right? That's the biblical standard. So when we see that um, this is how God intended us uh, to be, we see that God has designed us, wired us differently. Right, he has created us differently. And so we see in terms of personality, in terms of thinking, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, everything, right? From the way we process information, the way we remember. We looked at that, right? Memory also, the way we remember details. Uh, you know, for men, it could be, um, um, you know, uh, maybe event-driven. Uh, for women, it could be um, totally different. They might remember the details. The de men might have a very um, bird's-eye view of the, the, the big picture. The women will have, you know, details like okay, dates and time and, you know, uh, uh, and so many other things. Like, so there are differences in that way. There are differences in our habits. There are differences, to, and to and to add it all, there are differences in the way we were brought up. There are the difference in culture. There are difference in uh, you know, customs and so on. Um, so, with all these differences, you know, it, it's one. If you look at it, it's the differences that actually kind of draw us to each other, right? Uh, like if you look at a couple, uh, husband and wife, it is the differences that actually drew them to each other. In the first place, um, so they they you know kind of got to know each other, like each other, and so on. It is because of these differences. They say that oh, you know, this person is so different from me, and it's it's like, wow, this is uh, I never you know uh, this is so interesting. Maybe you find the person interesting because they are so different. But then the very things that you find to be interesting, you know, uh, becomes. Um, you know, points of conflicts or factors for conflicts, right? Because you are so different, you know, how can why can't you do it like this? You know, but the fact is, I'm different, and uh, and the fact is that that is what um, uh, you know drew me to that person in the first place. But then now, as a as we go through life, um, then these are the things which which arise as sharp differences, right? So, well, conflicts do happen. You know that's uh, that's a reality. So it's it's not uh, it, it's okay if conflicts happen. It uh, it's because of these differences. But conflicts need to be uh, you know sorted. Conflicts need to be resolved. Right? And um, we looked at last class. We looked at the uh, anger uh, questionnaire. Right. We looked at uh, some of those things uh, which which we do or which we, uh, you know, some of those statements we looked at and we say, okay, is it true in my case? Is it false in my case? Because as a result of conflict, one of the things that happens, one of the emotions that gets stirred up and released is anger, right? Uh, and um, anger, we, we saw that it is, a, it is a good emotion because it's, it, uh, it's, it's like pain, right? It shows us that something is wrong. Just imagine if we did not have, if we were not sensitive to pain, you know, um, and then uh, we would be 
having all kinds of problems, all kinds of difficulties. We will be, we will be probably walking on thorns and walking on certain things that cut our soul, cut our feet, uh, and totally, you know, ob oblivious to it. You know, but just because we have a response of pain, we know that oh, that's something that I should avoid, or I, I need not step there, or I can't put more pressure um, on that particular place because you know it is it is actually hurting me, right? So um, so we see that. Uh, like that, anger is actually showing us that something is wrong. Like something has, we have been wronged, or there has been a uh, sense of injustice and all that. So it shows us, you know, something is wrong. But it is, uh, if we would, um, if we would act on or act um, uh, in response to anger then we would commit sin. So the Bible is very clear, Ephesians 4, we saw, uh, be angry and do not sin. Let the sun not go down on your wrath. So we looked at that scripture. Okay, so um, let's look at, uh, you know, where we stopped. We, we stopped at, um, you know, the steps to resolve conflicts, right? Uh, we looked at, um, uh, I think a few, let's just go over that again. The steps to resolve conflicts okay the first one um, in resolving conflict is something that we do personally but even before we we approach the other person with whom we have a conflict okay? in this case we're talking about husband and wife so even before we approach and try to resolve try to bring a solution um, try to confront whatever it is even before that um, the first step is to pray and prepare ourselves yeah, this is a very important step, right? Because we uh, we would have had uh, some emotions stirred up, anger, rage, right? Um, maybe some bitterness. We could have said some words uh, in anger. We could have, you know, done some things, right? Or uh, you know, whatever it is, our reaction, response could have been unrighteous, right? Sinful. So we need to first of all get right with god okay um so just go before him and say lord i did this or i acknowledge you know acknowledge uh, what are some things to acknowledge acknowledge what the details of what went wrong uh, um, from our side from your side and from my side to acknowledge and say god this is something that I did, it was wrong. This is something that I said, it was wrong, irrespective of what the provocation. You know, sometimes we justify uh, our emotions or our words or our actions um, because of the provocation, right? because the extent of provocation, saying that, well, this was done to me, therefore I was right in doing this. Right now, that's as long as we have that attitude, we can't go very far in resolving a conflict. Right? As long as we have that attitude, saying, "Okay, I'm justified in saying this. I'm justified in doing it. Uh, I'm justified in, you know, causing hurt." Uh, if you're going to have that attitude, then it's going to be it's going to be very difficult because uh, sooner or later that will again crop up. That will again come up. Right, and we're going to that will be counter. It will counteract the entire process. We cannot have, um, we cannot resolve it. Okay, but first of all, you know, why do we want to resolve this conflict? Okay, is it okay to just be quiet? Is it okay to just, you know, brush things over? Okay, we, okay, we had a fight. We had a conflict. Let's move on now. You know, let's just forget about it. Let's just move on. What do you think? Is it okay to do that? You know, we, we just pray, forget that it didn't happen. You know, just like that was, you know, as far as East is from the West, so far as he removed our sins and, uh, you know, he's forgotten it, he's just cleansed. So can't we also do the same thing? Just forget it. What do you think? Is it okay to have that attitude and say, okay, uh, you know, we had a fight, but just forget it. It's okay. What do you think? Is it okay? Um, if it's if it's okay, right? Um, 
why is it okay if it's not okay why is it not okay um okay jeffina says no so just you know can you also tell us why it's why is it a big no uh, if somebody thinks okay it's okay to do that you know overlook something and keep going um maybe you can say why um so that is clear in our minds uh i think it's a yeah. no because uh, i think we should solve the issue like we should just about it what happened why it happened or mm-hmm. sorry or something because i think in my case i don't think i'll forget it <laughs> if we just move on i'll remember mm-hmm. it once again one day and i'll be like that day you told me to forget i didn't forget it yet mm-hmm. or something like that but if we just solve it and if we just speak about it mm-hmm. i think it'll mm-hmm. be good yeah okay so jeffina says okay it's better to talk okay um okay so another question you know are there some things that um, that we can you know just brush aside are there some things you know like major things minor things should we major on minor things um what do you think are there some things that you can just let go I don't think so. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Mm. If we really have that time to talk about it, just talk it out. Right. <laughs> Because I think we girls remember remember every details as mm. we always say. We do remember the details, even if it's very small. We do remember the details. I don't okay, think it would be so... nice to just brush it off and let it go, because we are mm. obviously going to remember. <laughs> okay so because of memory okay memory is a good thing but memory also you know we remember these things so it could crop up in future of the relationship okay so elisha says uh, no because the underpinning issues causing the conflict need to be discussed so we avoid uh, reoccurring uh, the situation to reoccur so uh, whatever has caused it in the first place um, you know if you don't uh, get to the root of it we always stand um, the chance of this whole thing coming up again right um and and next time it will be even powerful even more intense um, because this is not resolved right? so we're talking about a conflict we're not talking about um let's say you know you you get angry about something or you get irritated about something and uh, you know you've not settled it in your heart not that kind of a thing it's here you've ha- actually had a fight or actually had an argument actually had A, a conflict okay so we are talking about that kind of a situation right so you see there are times when we feel upset uh, and we've not done anything about it we've not shown it to that person we've not expressed that to the person but here inside you know we've we've become angry with the person um but we've not really expressed that anger so now in those cases we can actually get get things right with god you know just go before god and then say lord i i felt this way Uh, about this person i i should not have or you know i had these thoughts i had these things to do i, I was wanted to take revenge um i had these i felt this way and i felt you know bitter about that person so um i, I know i should not have right so we get right with god and yeah that's it uh we 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 clear things and we just we move on so here we're talking about a situation where we have actually had a no conflict right so then in that case it is there as a marker it is there as a as a banner you know it's like okay this is what happened so um try as we might it is still there it is still not ironed out so uh, we need to you know uh, especially uh, since the uh, marriage uh, relationship you know we are we are striving for a, a lot of things we are working on a lot of things the process of becoming one we want trust to be there we want the transparency to be there we want the communication to be there right all those good things right and we want it to be there so an unresolved conflict comes like a, it's like a slowly you know building up a wall it's like a barrier that comes up so uh, unless it is dealt with it's going to it's going to come up right so yeah so that's um, so that's uh, the reason why we need to not brush it uh, under the carpet but really uh, deal with it right okay so let's look at um 
the first thing that we said, okay, we need to pray. We need to prepare our hearts. So we go before God, we confess, and we say, Lord, uh, I just need your grace. So take some time to do that. And, and as we do that, I'm sure, you know, when you, you're you revisiting, okay, uh, this is the reality. When you revisit something unpleasant, then you're going to feel those emotions again. Okay, so maybe uh, you're going back to that time. You're going back to that moment when these things happen. So you're going to feel those emotions. Get ready for it. You're going to feel irritated again. You're going to feel angry again. You're going to feel upset again, right? And uh, so there's no... Uh, so it's better to be prepared and say, okay, as I revisit, I'm going to feel all that because I'm again thinking, replaying that whole thing that happened. But this time, the thing is this, that um, we are in the presence of God, we are talking to him, and we are, you know, pouring out our hearts to him. Right. This time we're saying, God, I'm feeling this way. You know, it's like what the psalmist would say. The psalmist, if you read the psalms, you know, we, we see that he would just pour out. He would just vent out to God. He would say, God, are you even there? Right. You just, uh, it, it's, it's like, God, you know, I'm feeling this, God. My enemies are doing this, God. And he would just vent out. Right. So this is what we're doing. We're going before God and we're saying, Lord, I'm feeling this pain. Lord, I'm feeling hurt. Lord, I, I, I think injustice has been done, God. So we pouring, we pour out to him. And as we do that, the Lord speaks to us. The Lord reminds us who he is. Right. Uh, and, uh, and as we pour out to him, there is, uh, as he hears and as we listen, you know, there is this sense of peace because he is the God of peace and he releases peace. And the work of the Holy Spirit is, you know, if you if you see Galatians 5 and verses 20, 22, we see that the work of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the work of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, um, you know, goodness and patience and kindness and gentleness um, and self-control. And so all the all these are released. We are actually giving a, an opportunity. We are opening the doors for all these things to come into our heart, to come into our, to flood our thoughts, to flood our minds. And so uh, we are being prepared. Our heart is being prepared. And we are being prepared to face, um, uh, prepared to actually resolve the conflict. Right. So that's the second thing that happens. Even as we pray, even as we prepare our hearts, we are receiving something from him. Okay, so we are receiving, what are we receiving? We are receiving his love. We are receiving, uh, we are being enabled by God to love and to forgive, right? Uh, Romans 5 and verse 5 is a very powerful verse because it's, it says uh, that something has been given to us already, okay? Uh, if we would turn there, Romans 5, maybe I'll just um, project um, just a minute, sorry. Okay. 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 So we here we are receiving uh, his empowering. Okay, we are receiving his empowering to to love. We are receiving his empowering to um, forgive. Okay, so let's look at Romans chapter. Sorry, I thought I had the verse um, here. So let's uh, let's look at that verse, Romans five and verse five. Okay, it says now now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Okay, So the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So what has been poured out into our hearts? You know, it's it's something amazing. It's, it says the love of God. Okay? And the word used there is agape, okay? which is... Uh, which is something amazing because every believer has access to agape not just to receive 
in the sense not just to be a recipient of God's love for us, right? But it says here that this love has been poured out into our hearts with, and what is the reason? So that we can actually express. Because that is what we see in 1 Corinthians 13. Right? 1 Corinthians 13, if you want to turn there, says, uh, again, the whole chapter is about agape, the God kind of love, the unconditional love. And, um, okay, let's read a few verses from there. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4 says, um, the Old English says, love suffers long. Uh, but it means love is patient. Love does not envy. Love is not selfish. Love is not jealous. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Love is not proud. Uh, love does not behave rudely, nor seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil. And all these good things are good characteristics. We see it's found in Christ. It's Christ-likeness. But it is the agape love. right? It is the unconditional love of God. So this has been poured out, this love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So it's, a, it's something really amazing because, uh, well, we can't say um, that, okay, I don't have the ability because God has actually, as a believer, one who is connected to the vine, we have a God kind of life, Zoe, in us, right? And secondly, we have the God kind of love that has been poured out by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we have been empowered. We have been given the resource. So as we prepare our hearts, God actually enables us to love with this kind of love, to forgive with this kind of um, you know, uh, forgiveness. Right? So when we pray, we acknowledge God. I thank you. You know, we receive. All right. Thank you for that love. Thank you for pouring out your love. Thank you for, you know, the, for the, this kind of love that forgives, the love that does not uh, behave rudely, that does not envy, a love that is patient. Lord, I thank you that I have this love. You have poured out. So this, all this happens, and it's, you know, it's it's making a change. We are we are arriving personally. We are arriving at a place um, to suitably resolve the conflict okay um so you see you know as believers you know, how can i be unequally yoked to one who's not a believer uh, in order to have this kind of a receiving from god right in order to have this kind of a, a healing this kind of an en enabling or empowering from god uh, in order to show or in order to express to each other like, how can I have access to it? Like the natural man does not receive the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually received. And uh, one who is dead, one whose spirit is dead to God, is unable to receive this. So, um, so we are prepared to receive. Okay. And the third thing is this. Third step is to receive the wisdom to address the situation. Wisdom comes from the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. Right? Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6 talks about that. So uh, we, we need to have the wisdom in order to resolve this conflict. So the thing is that you know not all conflicts are simple. Right? Some are multi-layered. Some are interconnected. Right? And we need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God to address it in the right manner. We need the wisdom of God to, to even take that first step. We need the wisdom of God. Um, so many times we approach the situation without wisdom and it becomes even worse than, than you know, uh, how it was. Right. So we need the wisdom of God. Um, so And God is, uh, of course, we see in the book of James, James chapter 1, that he, he is um, more than willing. He is the one. If we go before him and say, Lord, I lack wisdom. Uh, James 1 and verse 5. Let me just read that out. Um, okay, James 1 and verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. Okay, so our hearts are prepared. We are in a much better place. 
we've received healing from the for the hurts the love of god has been poor you know uh, we are experiencing the love of god and we've been empowered by the love of god and all this is happening in our hearts and then we are in a place to receive the wisdom of god right we are saying okay god i need wisdom what should i do and it says here that he's more than willing like he gives to all liberally and without reproach but let him ask without doubting verse uh, six let him ask in faith let him ask without doubting and it will be given right so uh, the lord says okay you go sometimes it's like um, just go and uh, just confess right um, just go and uh, start with this and I remember uh, for me, um, uh, I, I was sharing about that other incident, right? So where I was trying to justify, okay, this is what happened. This is what I did. This is what she said. This is what I said and, and all that. And the Lord said, stop. Okay, so stop. You know, you've, you've said that you're wrong because of these reasons, one, two, three, four, five. And that's enough. I, I will take care of the rest. Uh, in another instance, now this was with um, with a, with a group actually, uh, with the team and uh, and uh, the Lord while while in prayer, the Lord actually you know uh, gave me a picture, a visual thing, and then said, okay, this is what you need to do. Uh, you just need to empty yourself. You just need to whatever has you know you have done wrong. You just need to confess. You just need to do that and publicly and then acknowledge. Okay, and I will take care of the rest. My my response was, but but Lord, you know how it is. But Lord, you know, uh, uh, you know, maybe I should defend myself. I should justify why I did what I did, or maybe I should say, okay, these are some things that I did right, but these are some things that I did wrong. But the Lord said, no, you just go with this. Just go, whatever you did wrong, start with that. So the Lord gives a wis wisdom. The Lord gives a strategy. Right. The Lord gives, um, you know, maybe the starting point uh, sometimes, uh, and that's that's more than enough. Right. So uh, you start out with that. We need the wisdom of God, and we we uh, start with it. We receive it, and then we work on it. You know, it's not just enough to receive the wisdom. Uh, we need to take that step of um, you know, working on uh, the wisdom or working in line. Uh, with that instruction, with that counsel. Uh, many times we can receive the counsel and not do anything about it. Uh, but we need to, you know, it's like people who sometimes stop you and ask you for directions and you give them the directions and they don't take it up. You know, sometimes you wonder, you know, why did I waste my time? I stopped and I, you know, gave them the directions. You turn, turn left, turn right, you go there and you should reach it. And then you've done that and then they're not, you know, uh, working on your instruction right? so the lord gives wisdom the lord gives counsel now we need to work on it okay okay the fourth one is to discuss and address the matter now this is this is where it, it really becomes challenging okay so now is it, now now is the thing so all this was personal preparation the first three was personal preparation where we prayed where we where we were empowered enabled by the love of god and we receive the wisdom of god so all that happens and now is the uh, is the uh, is the time to really put it to take that step okay so now you're going to lovingly confront and uh, we're going to address this whole matter Okay, so now the other person, now the spouse comes into the picture here. Now it becomes challenging. It's no more about just you. It's about, you know, it's, it's us, right? It's, it's both of you. So um, it becomes challenging, right? So we need to speak truth, not hold back the truth. Okay, we need to address the truth. Um, but that truth needs to be spoken in love now, many times we we want we speak the truth and truth hurts and uh, we speak it without love okay when we speak truth without love then it can really hurt right? it can um, uh, it'll be it'll be without grace and we have and we have been asked to we've been instructed to speak the love 
to respond, to speak the truth in love, sorry, speak truth in love. Okay, so uh, if you look at um, uh, Ephesians 4, okay, Ephesians 4, and verse um, 15, okay, uh, let's say we read 14 and 15, we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. Okay, so speaking the truth in love is growing in Christ likeness. Like speaking the truth in love is, is becoming more like him. Right. So um, so this is the thing. So what is important is where we speak it, when we do it, when we speak it, right, the time that is chosen to speak uh, speak uh, the truth right, to discuss it and uh, and also you know how you do it okay so where do you do it when do you do it and how you do it okay very important so where you do it okay um, you need to uh, discuss and okay find a place where it's uh, it's conducive for resolving you know if you're doing it in a in a manner that's a hurried manner, you know, on the way, you know, just about to leave the house, and everybody, you know, both of you are working, and you're just about to leave. Hey, by the way, you know, um, I'm sorry this happened, and uh, yeah, I, I think we just need to put it behind. Do you have anything to say? You know, you've got two minutes to <laughs> leave the house, and uh, do you have anything to say? No, okay, fine. I think we are sorted. Um, let's let's put this behind us. No, that's not. You know, you just rush through something. Uh, and the person is, uh, you know, in your mind, you want to just solve it and get going, but then you need to give time, right, um, for the other person as well to uh, to just think through. Okay, so it's going to take time. It depends, right? So where you do it, okay, when are you going to do it? Pick a time when both are both are not preoccupied with things, both are not busy, um, both are, you know, in a frame of mind to... Uh, to talk about and uh, to discuss. Now, um, yeah, just pray. You know, you've prayed and you've asked for wisdom, and I'm sure God will give us the grace to uh, to arrive at that. You know, that's one of the first things that you come in agreement with, right? Okay, let's let's do this. Let's talk about it. Okay. Um, so what what is challenging in this is that uh, one person is hurting more than the other. Okay. Um, so they're not ready yet. Maybe it's the conflict has been very, very intense, and you know, kind of, uh, you had a, a major, uh, you know, w uh, major conflict, and words been spoken, uh, people hurt, etc. So it's maybe it's uh, it needs the, the other person needs a little more time. No, that's fine. But you can give the reassurance, saying, okay, I really want to talk about it. I really want to, um, you know, address this. I think it's um, it's not it's it's not helping. It's not helping our marriage. It's not helping our relationship. So let's let's talk. So if you're not ready now, so you, know, you let me know when you're ready. I'll ask you again, or maybe you can think of any other time. But let's talk about it. Right. Okay. So um, so you decide that, and you find the place and the time. So the thing is to um, start with one thing, you know, get to the root of the matter. Okay. Rather than a whole lot of things. Right. Start with one thing um, and discuss that. So uh, maybe uh, since you're the person who's taken the initiative to to resolve, uh, you start with that. You go first, maybe, or maybe you can ask the other person. Okay, you go first. You know, you you tell me what is it that is in, you know uh, about this whole thing. The other person might say, okay, I don't want to talk about it now. You go first. Okay. So you go first. You'd say, "Okay, this is what I, this is what happened." Okay, in my understanding, this is what happened, and uh, and maybe you can go through the facts, okay, um, and uh, how the whole situation broke down, right, and how each person responded in anger, and uh, maybe um, blamed each other, maybe spoke rude things to each other, etc. Um, so you can just talk about that. All the while, you know, not blaming the other person, but uh, uh, just stating things as it 
as it happened. Okay, um, so it's important for the other person to, uh, you know, when one person is speaking, tell it's important for the other person to be quiet and uh, and just hear hear out. Okay, so if the if the other person is speaking, if your spouse is speaking, it's important for you to be quiet and hear out, listen. Now you might want to jump in and say something and defend. Right? Uh, you may be tempted to do that, but don't do it. Right? Just um, just relax, be quiet, and uh, yeah, when when your spouse is finished, then you explain. Okay. So certain things to avoid. Uh, you know, let me just put it in the chat. Blaming. Okay. While it is true, you know, there there could be one person who did this, and they they know they um, they did something, they said something, they threw something at you. Uh, you know, they are to be blamed. But when you're resolving, don't blame the person. You know, you are always like this, or you are doing this. So don't blame, don't criticize, um, don't attack, don't retaliate. Okay, um, criticize. Um, don't attack the person and uh, don't retaliate if even if they are saying certain things don't retaliate they are ETA okay um, these are some things to avoid you know because you're trying to resolve something you don't want the situation to go worse uh, than it is already right so don't do that um, okay so um, you know, in, in the notes, there are some practical steps which are, you know, taken from this uh, website. So, um, so we can talk about that. Uh, we can we can go through that. So the thing is, we are talking about one issue. Right? We're not talking about multiple issues. Um, one major issue which has contributed to the to the uh, conflict. So you talk about it. You uh, and then you discuss. Okay, how to um, how to resolve this whole thing, right? This one thing had, uh, um, has resulted in a break in a breakdown, and maybe there was maybe there was misunderstanding on each side. Uh, we can talk about that and clear the air. Okay, it's because you thought this, you assumed this, or I thought this way, and that is why I uh, said this and I did this. So you can, if there are any misunderstandings, um, you can clear that at this time. And to come up with some solutions. Okay. Now, now, what do we do about this now? Okay. What do we do about this? Can you suggest something? Um, well, if some suggestions are uh, shared, then you consider. Okay. Um, evaluate it objectively. Right. Now, all this would uh, we would be able to do it only if we have actually prepared our hearts initially prepare our hearts in God's presence because otherwise you know we are again uh, when things are stirred up we will uh, we will not be able to proceed we will be able to we will just go back and start blaming go back start criticizing go back in anger and uh, the, the matter will be worse than when we started it right so so the thing is to um, especially in that stage of uh, okay what are the solutions you know because the thing is we are different no one could be well personality wise one is maybe um short tempered one still has anger issues you know, it's a uh, it's a difficult thing but as a couple we need to learn to do this right um we need to be able to make uh, do this you know as a couple so many things that you learn to do this is one of the you know you can say quote unquote quote unquote skill to learn as a couple, right? Uh, and over a period of time, you realize, okay, we can do this. Uh, yeah, we had a conflict. Uh, we can, but we can do this. You know, you you do it in a very amicable manner, and you might even laugh through the whole thing. Okay. So um, let's look at uh, a couple of scriptures that help us. Matthew chapter five and verse nine. Okay. Let's uh, read there. Matthew 5 and verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Okay. 
excuse me, peacemakers. So meaning that, okay, so if I'm actually trying to resolve, trying to make peace, the Lord Jesus says that blessed are the peacemakers. Okay, He's saying, I'm blessing you, releasing my blessing upon you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Okay, um, okay so we'll continue. We'll just take a break, and then we'll continue. All right. Thank you.